Welcome to this care collab about the Catlianthus Siamese doll Kiwi. There are many Catlianthus Siamese dolls out there with different cultivar names. Mine is the Kiwi. And coincidentally, the Orchid Saga also has the same one, same cultivar name, Kiwi, and will be joining us today in a care collab discussing how we take care of our Catlianthus Siamese doll Kiwi. Appreciate your time. I hope this video will be of help if you have one and it isn't quite performing. If my type of setup is not to your liking or would not be applicable in your environment and climate, then the Orchid Saga has a different setup, has a little bit more of a controlled setup. I am here in southern Spain where I have very, very mild winters. In comparison to other climates, they are far too cold for me. Let's just get the temperatures out of the way. My winters can drop down to five degrees Celsius. I have very, very low humidity. I would like to now consider an average of 40% throughout the year. It can fluctuate. Of course, winters can be a little bit higher in humidity, but by that time, my setup, being lecker and self-watering, is not exactly good for what most Catlias would prefer, a wet, dry cycle. And we'll get to that. So the temperatures are something that I have to deal with, especially from the months of November through March. My night temperatures indoors when this orchid goes inside for the night will always be a steady 15 degrees Celsius indoors. No matter what happens outdoors, I will not have my Catlianthus Siamese doll Kiwi outdoors when the temperatures drop below 15 degrees Celsius because I like to consider a three degree differential of what is in ambient air as opposed to what is happening in the pot. So once I see that my night temperatures are going below 15 degrees Celsius, my orchid goes inside into the dining room area where she lives under blurple lights because usually, I hope, by that time she's starting some new growths. I like my orchids to grow upright and the blurple lights coming obviously from the top encourage the growth to go straight up towards the light. But in the summer, happy days, when the temperatures are back to a steady 15 degrees at night, she goes back outside onto the east shelf of my patio, but very much protected from direct sun. She is a bifolded as you can see, so let's talk about light. You can see how much freckling I have on the leaves. That's okay. This is not a problem because obviously the parentage plays a big role. We'll get into that. So freckling on the leaves, that is anthocyanin. That is not the problem. That is a certain light level. This, however, is not okay. Too much light, and that is when she was on my south side on my blooming alley last year when she was in bloom and <clears throat> yep, the angle of the sun hit her. So one has to be a little bit careful with the light. Again, I speak from light levels of southern Spain where it is extremely bright. We get a lot of sun and I have an entire patio that reflects white because of the facade. When she's on the east side, she is tucked behind a white curtain. So again, lots of light but no direct sun. Her light levels are pretty continuous throughout the summer, approximately eight hours. And then of course, when the sun moves around the building, I take the curtain off and then there's still a lot of reflections. So light levels here are not a problem whatsoever. In the winter, I do supplement a little bit more depending on how dull the days are. If I don't have steady temperatures outdoors of 17 to 20 degrees Celsius with sunshine, she will stay indoors on dull days under the blurple lights for approximately eight hours a day. But if our winters are sunny, then she goes outside and then I bring her back in before it gets too cold. Those are the days she would have more light, of course, because then I'm only supplementing with the blurple lights for another four hours just to keep a little bit of an average going so that she doesn't sort of sit in the dark for three months of the year when she is supposed to be growing new growths. So let's get to the growths. Um, there are none. I have no new growths. And this is a first for me. So what am I learning here? Is the orchid acclimating? I've had her now for three years. The first year she bloomed very, very nicely. One bloom only, but for the first year I was quite happy with that. And what I thought was remarkable is that she bloomed around June. And I thought, great, awesome. And I thought, 
Another thing that was really, really superb, which I had not ex expected, is that she starts out with green and has sort of Bordeaux spotting, and that is the Eclandier parent, the Guttata parent, and Granulosa parent. But this is all way, way down. Her immediate parents are Catliantha Netrasiri Doll, cross with Catlia Netrasiri Beauty. So those are her immediate parents. But all the spotting on the blooms literally come from the ancestors of Eclandier, Guttata, and Granulosa. But as you can see here, yeah, that was the first year, June, she had one bloom. And then she was already growing a new growth when she first bloomed for me. And that growth bloomed in the winter and I got two blooms. I'm like, this is going really, really well. And then I got another bloom in another season, for me, off season last year, but it was a single bloom. And since then, nothing. Now, last year I did divide her quite heavily after she finished blooming, but still, we are now talking 12 months and I have not seen the blooms on this orchid, which is totally bizarre. I have also not seen any new growths at all since the division. And to be honest with you, I thought I was going to get eyes because of the cut and she would create another lead, but nope, there's nothing, not a light, but we've had roots for days. It's not like she's stalled or anything. We have roots going coming out of the wazoo here as well. So she has been busy, but more so in the pot as opposed to on the surface. I see an eye here, and if I start to get another winter growth, well, then the challenge is on because once again, it's not the climate that she would prefer. It's too cold. She is more of a warm to hot grower, and that is probably why if she keeps up with this rhythm of only growing growths in the winter, I may only get one bloom out of her ever and at all because normally she can go three to four blooms on a single spike. The maximum I've ever achieved was two. My fertilizing regime right now, even though she's not growing a new growth, is a full 300 parts per million of fertilizer, which includes calcium and magnesium. My fertilizer has that in it to a certain degree because of the amount of roots that she's pushing. So I'm encouraging these roots with the fertilizer. I'm also giving her a supplemental calcium and magnesium and seaweed at this point in time, because I wanna make sure that she has all the strengths and nutrients in her when we head into winter, because by that time, I am piping down with the fertilizer, even though she may be in active growth. I know this sounds bizarre, but despite being in active growth, the temperatures are much cooler her light levels are not as high as they are during the summer. Neither is the time period of light that she has. So her growths don't grow as fast during the winter than they would during the summer. And remember, I had one summer experience where I did see a growth grow during the warmer months and it bloomed. And I was really pleased as well because I thought, this is great, this orchid blooms twice a year. And well, since then, I cannot prove that that is the case because I haven't seen any more blooms. So I piped down with my fertilizer to 160 parts per million to encourage the growth, but not pump so much fertilizer into the pot because I want to avoid mineral buildup on the surface of my pot. So I, I have to say that if this is an easy to grow orchid based on the fact she is bifoliate. Uh, she's confusing me a little bit at this point in time. And it could be an acclimating process that in the early years that I had her, she was sort of figuring out where she is, what she has to do based on my climate. And she was chucking out growths and blooms to survive. Now that she's figured out where she is, <laughs> I believe maybe we are settling down into a rhythm that her growths will start during the winter and then hopefully bloom early spring. I won't know until in a couple of months see what's going on. At this point in time, really, the swellings down here, they, I'm not impressed. I see them and I've seen them for the past months. They haven't budged at all. The beauty about these blooms, of course, is the spotting. I love the spotting. The surprising thing about the blooms that I wasn't expecting was the color change, how they start out a little bit greener when they've just opened, and then they start to turn into a canary yellow and the spotting remains a Bordeaux color. I absolutely love these blooms. They're heavy set, they're waxy, and they are quite long lasting. I always got like three weeks, four weeks out of mine. 
and they're beautifully, beautifully fragrant as well. They do have a plasticky kind of fragrance to them, but there's a hint of sweetness to it as well, which is extremely appealing. If I would say like a sugar, a burnt sugar kind of fragrance, not honey, that is too sticky sweet, more of a subdued burnt sugar fragrance with a little bit of a hint of a plastic in the background. I personally don't mind it. It is not very, very strong, but when you put your nose in it, it is very, very obvious. I do flush this orchid regularly with plain RO water, and I always use the size of the mask here as my measure, and I take two of them and flush the pot through before filling up again the reservoir with fertilizer, or sometimes just plain RO water, depending what the orchid is doing. But again, as long as there's activity in the pot, she gets her fertilizer. In the winter, I'm a lot more conservative with the amount of water I put into my reservoir. If the reservoir is, let's say, two fingers deep, I would always then err on the side of caution and only have one finger as opposed to two fingers in the summer. So I make sure that the pot inside doesn't rest on the water, but I definitely do not want my microfiber to dry out. Let me see if I can take the pot out without breaking anything. So the microfiber in the winter stays damp all the time. And this would be the water level of the pot, like one finger at the base during the winter. If the reservoir were ever to dry out during the winter, I'm okay with that because the microfiber will stay damp for much, much longer. But if she is in active growth, I don't want my reservoir to dry out. Can I say that she is an easy grower? I would like to, but I'm a little bit confused about what she's done this year. Meanwhile, my year this year has been totally different as well, as opposed to previous years. It's been a much cooler year. I think I had two or three days where we reached 40 degrees Celsius. I had very, very dry, strong dry winds over a long period of time, but I think that it was more the fact I had a five or six degree cooler season altogether, including how long it took for spring actually to warm up. That's kind of put this orchid a little bit out of sync. A very mild growing season for what my orchids are used to. And it seems as though that there's a secondary effect on this one. We'll have to wait and see what 2022 brings and also what the winter brings. But definitely I will be updating on this orchid as and when something happens that is relevant and I'm hoping then that the Orchid Saga will be available to do future updates on Siamese Doll Kiwi. Because quite honestly, I love this orchid as well. Otherwise, she wouldn't be in my collection simply because of her growth habit. You see, she is a bifoliate. You would expect her to flop and, you know, bend over all over the place. But she is not cumbersome in her care. She's pretty straightforward. Observing the root growth before doing any repotting clearly will not hold this orchid back whatsoever. As you can see, she's gone mental in the pot, but new root growth when it comes to dividing, repotting, cleaning up the root ball is always, always highly, highly recommended, especially with bifoliates. That is pretty much the gist of what I do with my Catlianthe Siamese doll kiwi. And if you have this orchid, and I haven't covered anything else with regards to the care, and if you have any questions, the comments below are there for a reason, please ask away. If you happen to have this orchid as well, and you do videos, and you're seeing this for the first time, well, let me welcome you to the Care Collab and ask if you would be interested to join us in future updates or how you care for your Siamese doll kiwi. Leave me a comment in the description below and I will get in touch with you via email, etc. Send you some more information and get you on board the Care Collab initiative. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you also to the Orchid Saga for your time. And if you have come to my channel from the Orchid Saga, welcome. Sorry, I don't have any blooms to show you apart from the pictures. If you have not been to the Orchid Saga's channel just yet, why don't you head over there? Because there are Catlianthus Siamese doll kiwi blooms to behold and admire. Really appreciate your time. Wish you a beautiful day on one condition. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.